Records indicate Yuzu has been cultivated in Japan since the Asakusa and Nara periods around 710 AD. One of the most rarest and most difficult citrus to grow due to poor pollination and inconsistent yields. Over seven varieties of yuzu can be found scattered across Japan. One of them can be found commercially. Let's go beyond the rudimentary knowledge and expand our garden expertise surrounding citrus. Acquire seeds from a reputable source. Identify the lineage before the germination process is initiated. Germinate mature seeds. Premature seeds will encounter many health issues as they develop. Yuzu and many other citrus cultivars contain polyembryonic seeds. My preferred choice of germination is a wet paper towel, deli or food container, and water placed directly in the sun or over a heat mat designed for germinating seeds. Additional methods of propagation involve grafting. Grafting is the best approach since you're getting the exact clone. Although it seems simple, grafting isn't always 100% successful, but it's always a 100% chance of getting exactly what you grafted. Success rate varies by the time of the year. Spring has a 90% chance, summer has 50%, fall has 10%, and winter has 1% chance. Additional methods of propagation involve rooting mature scions. This method is difficult and yields low success rates. Rooting signs require hormones which accelerate the recovery, thus causing the plant to grow roots as a survival response. Signs of flush indicate a developed root system. Root multiple scions to increase success chances. Due to the nature of this approach, it has a high failure rate. Use mature root stalks for grafting. It will almost guarantee your success. Additionally, you can graft a dozen scions and they will all take. Take this opportunity to thin the lower flush. Begin shaping your tree. By shaping your tree during this stage, it maximizes the growth and reduces the wasted energy on unwanted flush. The grafting tape will recede by the end of the year. It can be removed once the leaves mature. This signifies both scion and rootstock have healed at the union. Leaving growth unmanaged will create poor structural integrity and not recommended. Growth is most aggressive between spring and summer. New growth flush tends to attract aphids. Keep ants under control to avoid infestations. A mature and healthy rootstock will have a developed resistance to diseases. It will also have more vigor in terms of quicker growth and fruit yields due to the hormone levels. The citrus tree was grown from a seed. As you can tell, there are no visible graft unions. It was planted when this home was purchased two decades ago. The seeds were from a yuzu fruit collected during my visit to Japan. Out of the 10 seeds grown, this ended up not being true to seed. The other trees continue to be grown in a container. It's possible to grow yuzu in containers, but there are many challenges. In order for it to flourish, adequate lighting is the highest priority. Temperatures become inconsistent due to not being in ground, where temperatures are always consistent. Relative humidity and moisture control are problematic. Since roots are bound, they're not able to pull moisture when needed. Instead, they're dependent on manual saturation. Being container-bound, the roots cannot travel to find sustenance. Instead, it requires human intervention to routinely feed, creating poor feeding habits. There's also a loss in nutrients, since the roots are unable to nourish before they wash away during the fertilizing periods. Avoid fruit production in young trees. The quality of the fruit is extremely poor. Allow them to grow for 2-3 to three more years after grafting or purchase. Your patience will be rewarded. Prune aggressively to encourage consistent growth. Target the root stock where visible. If left unchecked, they will become evasive. Apply similar routine to container-grown trees, but less aggressive. Use sterilized pruners to prevent spread of diseases. Keep them well-maintained and they'll last for generations. When pruning, aim for extending or leggy growth to discourage broken limbs and falling branches. 
This allows the tree to focus its energy in building stronger branches. Compost pruned branches or sun dry them to use them for smoking meats. Compost foundation should begin in January to February to jumpstart the microbial life in the soil. Purge all internal growth, any branches growing inwards and create poor structural integrity. High grafts provide more root stock real estate that attracts unwanted growth. It's very common for citrus trees to be targeted by leaf miners. Damage is done internally to young leaves. Control infestations by removing the infected leaves. Engage in routine pruning during growth spurts. This prevents unwanted pests to overwhelm the tree. The tree may appear very sad, but it's actually much happier from getting a makeover. Pruning encourages optimal fruit quality and increases productivity in addition to maintaining health. A few days after pruning, you'll notice aggressive flush growth in every node. Purge unwanted flush before they harden and end up requiring tools for removal. Take advantage of this opportunity to thin out the growth and hand select the nodes to shape your tree. It may appear as though the rootstock growth is always in the picture. Once the tree is mature, it will slowly diminish. If left unmanaged, they'll overrun the tree and cause health issues. There are three types of cuts, topping, reduction, and cleaning. Topping involves cutting the entire tree from the trunk, specifically for grafting, isolating diseases, or transplanting. Reduction is commonly used to remove excess branches for a more centralized growth and aesthetic appearance. Cleaning is a follow-up after removal of branches to ensure there is no future growth. My routine consists of pruning twice a year, if you want high vigor in production, once before spring, and during harvest. This pruning stage allows ample light penetration and even airflow which makes the tree very heavy. Use sharp tools to make clean incisions. Breaking by hand attracts insects and spreads diseases. During spring, you'll see flowers bloom with flush at each node. Refrain from letting young plants bloom. They'll stunt their growth even if it does produce fruits, it'll be very lackluster or even drop prematurely. Mature trees provide full and healthier blooms, which result in quality yields and not premature fruit drops. Common pollinators include ants, bees, butterflies, and wind. Bees contribute 70% of the pollination compared to everything Mother Nature has to offer. A healthy immune system will prevent fungal infections and infestations. Mature trees are established, so they remain healthy and rarely become infested or become targets. The position of this ant's death suggests it was caused by unsuitable food. When ants consume pollen from plants that have been exposed to worm tea, they tend to perish prematurely. The fruits will set from successful pollination after a week. You'll notice a small fruit. A yellow fruit may appear. This is a result of poor pollination. If you have other varieties of citrus, they'll bloom during this time as well. In case you're wondering, these are Australian finger limes and usually can only be hybridized through pollination and the result would only appear in the seeds, not the fruit. Unless you grow the seeds to maturity, you will not encounter the hybridized yuzu. Breeding, grafting, and laboratory fusion are other approaches to hybridize the fruit. Purging root suckers should be routine, unless it's a planned growth. When prospecting for branches, select outward facing specimens. Inspect your tree, visualize how you plan on shaping it, and continue to remove unwanted branches. Monitor the tree for any evasive root suckers. Remove them when spotted to avoid diverting nutrients to the unwanted growth. Removing them in the early stages is a simple task, but as they mature and become woody, it's more challenging and requires tools. Graft low to avoid rootstock invasion. I prefer high grass as it provides an aesthetic appearance. Citrus trees are prone to disease caused by bug bite infections. The best defense is keeping your tree healthy as a preventative. These leaves appear sick upon inspection. We can see that there are several bug bites. Fortunately, the tree itself is healthy and it's decided to defoliate the leaves to prevent the plague.
Leaves with swollen veins and yellow spots are a sign of a starving tree. Fertilize its sufficient nutrients and the issues resolve itself in a week. These bite marks are left by insects such as the citrus cicada. They are a mild threat to citrus compared to the ants and aphids. They target younger trees consuming the sap. I leave them as ants and aphids are never around when I see the citrus cicadas. Citrus cicada activity is a very rare sighting. They are only active between May through July. Their common predators include birds, lizards, and rodents. They will only come out from the ground when the temperature is perfect. Beneficial insects provide a fortress, defending their host tree from aphids, ants, moths, and even leaf miners. The spring mantis egg releases over 100 nymphs during early spring once it warms up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Ants are the biggest threat to citrus trees. They create burrows and colonize at the root of the trees. This creates issues such as uneven watering, exposed roots, and infestations of aphids that lead to casualties. Accompanying these are scales. Once spotted, they need to be removed immediately to prevent population explosion. Next to aphids, scales are a second highest threat to citrus trees. They're shielded from the elements as they feed. Ants will protect them in a mutualistic relationship, in return provide them honeydew. The best solution is prevention. Manage the ant population and eliminate any scales the moment they're spotted. Once they spread, it becomes catastrophic. By boosting the immunity of the trees, they'll become more reactive to foreign invaders. Do so by providing them routine nourishment and not ignoring signs of their distress. Rapid response includes spraying aggressively with water. This method is short-lived, but continue daily to fight the persistent infestations. If it spread pathogens to nearby plants, as long as they are contained, your plants will recover with minimal issues. Aphid vector plant viruses are the main cause of high mortality rate among young and sometimes mature trees. You'll notice impacted growth, curled leaves, and high ant activity surrounding the tree. An organic approach next to spraying down the tree with water is introducing natural predators such as this ladybug. If your garden contains many other varieties of flowers and herbs, it will attract other beneficial insects such as this parasitic wasp. Parasitoids target both vertebrate and invertebrate insects. Lucky for this ladybug, it hunkers down as they were prepared for the unwelcomed visitor. Parasitic wasps sting to inject their eggs into the host. In a few days, the host will consume from the inside out, and an adult wasp will emerge. Their lifespan is about 1-2 to two weeks. Attracting these beneficial parasitoids can only be accomplished by maintaining an organic garden. Providing manual removal for heavy infestations will help control the population. After remediation has been applied, provide the tree time to recover and your patients will show signs of recovery. A week after blooms, fruitlets will appear. Thinning is not required for established trees. They become self-sufficient as they mature. If you choose to do so, you'll notice some of the fruitlets drop with a gentle touch. During this stage, they'll continue to self-thin until equilibrium has been achieved. A month after the fruit sets, everything starts to materialize. At this stage, the fruits will endure a few more phases of fruit drops before everything is stabilized. After 3 months, you'll see visible signs of fruits. At this stage, they'll need to be fertilized 2-3 to three times a month as they become very aggressive eaters. If you decide to thin all the fruits from your tree, you'll notice the second flush. This is a great approach for trees that are less than 5 years of age. Once they're fully mature, you'll be rewarded with a delicious bounty. Trees younger than 5 years of age are able to bear a reasonable amount of fruit but heavily impacts their growth. 
The feeding regimen involves liquid fertilizers and worm castings. Worm tea can be made from vermicomposting, and you never have to worry about over fertilizing. Worm tea for direct feeding. This provides microbial life to help boost the tree's immune system, in addition to many other nutrients. As a bonus benefit, it'll act as a foliar spray and insect repellent. Feed at the base of the tree and there will be no trace of ants. Use worm castings for indirect feeding. The castings act as a slow-release fertilizer over time. The microbial life in worm castings are unique compared to the ones found in worm tea. Depending on how you fed your worms, the nutritional value of these castings surpass anything you can purchase from the store. Apply a generous amount, about 48 ounces at the base of the tree. Do not worry about overfeeding. Depending on the quality of worm castings, they're quick dissolving and should not leave any debris when water is applied. Worm castings should be black in color, soft and fluffy when compacted into a ball. Filled with beneficial microbes and nutrients, there is no longer a need to purchase fertilizer. Saturate the castings and help it dissolve into the ground to release the beneficial biodiversity. Do not use unfiltered water, it will eradicate all the beneficial components. Once settled, it will lay between the mulch and the soil, creating a barrier to deter unwanted pests while slowly releasing nutrients over a span of 3 to 4 weeks. 4 months after the fruit set, they will start to resemble the shape of a yuzu. During this phase, they are fully edible but contains minimal juice, they are great for yuzu kosho at this time. Yuzu doesn't ripen once harvested, the quality deteriorates until it is no longer edible. Harvest with the leaves and stem to extend the shelf life. While not uncommon, fruits with sun scald will remain edible. The fruits will show signs of color when they start to reach maturity. An even color occurs but lasts only a few days until it's fully transitioned. The best time to enjoy yuzu is exactly at this stage where you can relish the best of both worlds. Pruning branches and thorns during this stage is encouraged. It will help shape the tree as it has reached the end of its season. Yuzu will remain green through the end of summer. As soon as it enters fall, they will start to reveal their colors. They're extremely tart during this green stage. Flavors are similar to a sudachi and a kabosu. It provides minimal juice, but it's considered the best stage to make yuzu kosho, a Japanese condiment consisting of yuzu zest, salt, and tokorashi chilies. My most desired stage is when there are hints of green and blushing with shades of yellow. They contain high levels of limonene and juice that they're perfect for cooking or making essential oils. Leave the remaining fruits on the tree, allow them to grow and fully ripen to make yuzu citron tea or yuzu shu. Always remember to sterilize your tools and avoid spreading diseases. Citrus trees can easily become infected. Retain the leaves and stems for an extended shelf life. Harvest yuzu right before consumption for the finest flavors it has to offer. Pruning during this stage is strongly encouraged. It will allow the tree to focus its energy on root development, increasing the overall health. Don't worry if the fruits drop, they do not bruise, but if they have open cuts, inspect thoroughly before consumption. Remove the thorns and retain a portion of the branch to help retain moisture in the fruit. The scent released during harvest is pleasantly therapeutic. Regardless of its size, all the fruit tastes very similar. Larger fruits will contain larger seeds and more juice. 
Harvest fruits in the morning after a deep soak the day before. This plumps them up to release an amazing flavor profile. The entire fruit is edible. The seeds can be made to make skin toner. Leaves for broth or steaming seafood to extract an exotic aroma and stems for smoking meats and fish to infuse a delicate citrus flavor. Even the rinds can be used to make candy treats and yuzushu. If rain is predicted in your forecast, allow it to fully saturate the ground before harvesting. The use of flavors released cannot compare to any other citrus in the world. There are three types of yuzu, han yuzu, hana yuzu, and nashi yuzu. Han yuzu is a prized cultivar commercialized in many prefectures of Japan. It's characterized by the fruit size, about 3 inches or 8 centimeters, strong aroma, and mild juice. Hana yuzu is a different variety used mainly for cooking. The aroma and flavor are similar but it's less intense compared to Han Yuzu. The fruit itself is slightly smaller. Nashi Yuzu is a seedless variety which contains much more juice and has a very thick skin, native to Kyoto and Tokushima Prefecture. It's best to make Yuzushu or citron tea during this stage. Zest can also be collected to make a more aromatic Yuzu Kosho. Every stage has a variety of options. It makes Yuzu an extremely versatile fruit and everyone should grow it in their yard. The initial stage of yuzu can be made into yuzu kosho, a very popular Japanese condiment consisting of fresh chili peppers, salt, and yuzu zest. As the fruit matures, you have several options. Yuzu citron tea, a honey and rind based tea concoction left to age for a few days before consumption. The flavor of the tea will be as good as the quality of the honey used. The infused honey can also be used in ice cream and even meringue for macarons. Essential oil, consisting of yuzu zest and essential oil based on your preference which can later be applied to candle making. Bath salts, aroma diffusers, and even skincare products should also be considered. And my favorite, sun-dried branches for smoking imported Kobe beef. There are too many possibilities. I'll cover them in my future videos. Share your recipes in the comments below for others to enjoy. Three trees I recommend growing regardless of the quality of the fruit is an apple tree, cherry tree, and citrus tree. Even if you don't enjoy the fruits, you can always graft another variety as the tree continues to mature. You can continue to do this until you're settled on the variety you want. As long as the rootstock is healthy, don't be afraid to experiment. The best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago, but the second best time is today. Please send a like and consider subscribing to my channel to show your support I hope to continue adding value to inquisitive minds and share the knowledge I've acquired passed on from generation to generation. Want to try some? Sounds good, huh? Let's see how this one smells like. Smell it? You smell it? You smell it? it? Smells good, huh? Oh, it smells so good. Mm.